We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter Number 16, entitled Maras Chitraketu Meets the, the Supreme Lord. Text number, who knows what text number it is? Is it 8? Yesterday was 7? Oh, Man Maharaj did it yesterday. Okay, so text number nine. Esha Nityo Avaya Avaya Sukrishna. Esha Sarvashraya Swadrik Atma Maya Guna Vishvam Atmanam Sri Jate Prabhu Esha Nityovaya Sak Suk Sushrishna Esha Nityo Vaya Sukrishna Esha Sarvashraya Swadrik 
Esha Sarvashraya Swadrik Atma Maya Gunir Vishwam Atma Maya Gunair Vishwam Atmanam Shri Jate Prabhu Atmanam Shri Jate Prabhu Esha Nityo Vaya Yasuk Sitsma Esha Sarva Shraya Swadrik Atma Maya Gunair Vishwam Atmanam Shri Jate Prabhu Esha Nityo Vaya Yasuk Shinisma Esha Sarva Shraya Swadrik Atma Maya Gunair Vishwam Atmanam Shri Jate Prabhu Anybody like to chant? Esha, this living entity, Nitya, eternal, Avyaya, imperishable, Sukshma, very, very fine, not seen by the material eyes. Esha, this living entity, Sarva Ashraya, the cause of different types of bodies, Swadrik. Self effulgent, Atma Maya Guna, by the Supreme Personality of Godhead's modes of material nature. Vishwam, this material world, Atmanam. Himself, Sri Jate, appears. Prabhu, the Master. Translation The living entity is eternal and imperishable, 
because he actually has no beginning and no end. He never takes birth or dies. He is the basic principle of all types of bodies, yet he does not belong to the bodily category. The living being is so sublime that he is equal in quality to the Supreme Lord. Nonetheless, because he is extremely small, he is prone to be illusioned by the external energy. And thus, he creates various bodies for himself according to his different desires. <laughs> Interesting, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In this verse, the philosophy of achintya bed abeda tattva, simultaneously oneness and difference, is described. The living entity is eternal, nitya, like the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the difference is that the Supreme Lord is the greatest, no one being equal to or greater than him, whereas the living entity is sukshma or very small. The Shastra describe that the magnitude of the living entity is one ten thousandth the size of the tip of a hair. The Supreme Lord is all-pervading. Andantarastha paramanu chayantarastam. Relatively, if the living entity is accepted as the smallest, there should naturally be inquiry about the greatest. The greatest is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the smallest is the living entity. Another peculiar characteristic of the jiva is that he becomes covered by maya, atma maya gunai. He is prone to being covered by the Supreme Lord's illusory energy. The living entity is responsible for his conditional life in the material world and therefore he is described as Prabhu, the master. If he likes, he can come to this material world and if he likes, he can return home back to Godhead. Because he wanted to enjoy this material world, the Supreme Personality of Godhead gave him a material body through the agency of the material energy. As the Lord himself says in Bhagavad Gita 1861, Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Rideshi Arjuna Tishtati Brahmayam Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudrani Mayaya. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. The Supreme Lord gives a living entity a chance to enjoy in this material world as he desires but he openly expresses his own desire that the living entity give up all material aspirations fully, surrender unto him and return home back to Godhead. The living entity is the smallest, sukshma. Jiva Goswami says, 
in this connection that the living entity within the body is extremely difficult for materialistic scientists to find. Although we understand from authorities that the living entity is within the body, the body is different from the living entity. The body is different from the living entity. Thus ends the purport to chapter, Canto 6, chapter 16, text number 9. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Salakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishnavi bio namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasate Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're hearing the dead child of Chitraketu Maharaj who has come back to life by the mystic power of Narada Muni. So by the mystic power of Narada Muni, this child who had left the body came back, got up and began to speak all of this uh, knowledge spiritual knowledge, transcendental knowledge, giving knowledge about the nature of the soul and how the soul is different from the body. Chitra Ketu Maharaj was lamenting the death of his son. His son died when still a child and Maharaj Chitra Ketu was very attached to his son. It was with great effort that he finally got a son. So he was overjoyed when his wife gave birth to a son. But when the son died, it devastated him. It broke his heart. He was totally helpless. But some, by the will of providence, Narada Muni came there. And Narada Muni brought the child back to life. And the child is speaking all of these words just to put Maharaj Chitra Ketu into the, to give him the right understanding about what is actually happening. The child leaving the body is just a change of body. As described here, the soul never dies. The living entity is the soul. And for the soul, there is no birth and there is no death. Najayate mriyate va kadachin nayam budva bhavitava nabuya ajo nityam shaspato yam purano nahanyate hanyamane sharire. For the soul, there is no birth and there is no death. Not having once been, does he ever cease to be. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing and prime evil. He is not slain when the body is slain. Lord Krishna spoke these words to Arjuna in order to encourage Arjuna in taking part in the battle of Kurukshetra. Arjuna was worried about killing people, but Lord Krishna explained to him, you don't kill anyone. The soul, the living entities are all eternal. Just as this child is speaking here today in this verse to Maharaj Chitra Ketu, he's saying the living entities don't die. The bodies die. We change the body. We give up one body, we take another body. 
just like we change the dress. Vachamsi jirnani yata vihaya navani grinati naroparani tata sharirani vihaya jirnani anyani samyati navani dehi. Just as we give up the old dress, you take a new dress. In the same way, we give up the old or diseased body, we will take a new body. So there's nothing to be lamented, right? Just like when you get a new car, you give up the old car, you get the new car. Nobody laments, right? We're joyful. I've got a new car. I got rid of that old car. It's all the same. We should think the same about the material body. We get rid of the old body. We get a new body. There's no reason to lament. You should be joyful. You get a new body. So, Prabhupada said, this is the philosophy of achintya ved abeda tattva that everything is inconceivably, simultaneously one and different. One and different. The living entity is one with the Supreme Lord, but at the same time he is different from the Supreme Lord. One in the sense that the, both the living entity and the Supreme Lord are spirit. They are Brahman, the particle of Brahman, their spirit, they're not material. The living entity and the Supreme Lord are both spiritual. But there's a difference between the Lord and the living entity. The Lord is infinite and the living entity is Sukshma. Very, very small. How small? One ten thousandth of the tip of the hair. Very tiny, right? The tip of the hair. Not just the hair, but the tip of the hair. The very tip of the hair. And then one ten thousandth of that. So very minute. That is our position. As spiritual entities, we are very small. And another difference between us and the Lord is that we become covered. The Lord is never covered, but we become covered by maya, by the illusory energy. And this is the problem for the living entity. This is what keeps the living entity in material life, taking birth again and again. Because it becomes covered by the illusion, the illusion that, the illusion that he is the body, that we think ourselves to be the body. We're thinking, I am this body, this is me. We look in the mirror, this is me. We don't see the real self. We don't see the soul. So in this way, the living entity is one with the Lord, but at the same time he is different from the Lord. And this, this understanding, this is also described in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says, Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana, that the living entities are my parts and parcels. The, but due to material nature, they're struggling very hard with the senses, including the mind. So the living entity is part of the Lord and parcel, but one in quality, different in quantity just like the drop of water and the ocean. The drop of water has all the qualities of the water in the ocean, but different in quantity. 
So in the same way, the living entity has this position of being one with the Lord, but at the same time different. Another example is given the spark and the fire. When there's a fire, you will get some spark also coming from the fire. Now the spark also has heat and light, just like the fire. But there's a difference. The spark is not equal to the fire. The quantity is different. And this also, we note that the spark can be extinguished. Whereas the fire will keep burning, the spark, if it comes out of the fire, and if it lands in water, then it will be extinguished. If the spark lands on dry grass, then it can ignite the grass and make another fire. Just like sometimes you get forest fires. And who created the fire? Nobody. Just nature. Just the rubbing of bamboo. The bamboo rubs together and, create, and if it's very dry, as in the hot season, very dry, the bamboo rods rub together, generate a spark, and the spark ignites the dry leaves which are there, and you get a forest fire. So, the same way the spark comes out of the fire, if it falls in the water, it can be extinguished. This is like the living entity. He is spiritual by nature, but if he contacts the material energy, and if he becomes illusioned by the material energy, then he becomes conditioned and he will stay in the material world. However, if the living entity, just like if the spark contacts dry grass, the dry grass can be ignited, it can burn and create another fire. In the same way, the living entity gives, he may come out from the association of the Lord, but he may be able to contact devotees, he may be able to stimulate people to take up Krishna consciousness. If he is very fixed and very strong in Krishna consciousness, he may be able to ignite another fire. He may be able to encourage other people to take up spiritual life. So, in different conditions for different living entities. Some living entities are Nitya Bada, and other living entities may be Nitya Siddha. Nitya Bada means eternally conditioned, that there's in the material world, they're conditioned to think they're the body. And the Nitya Siddhas, they understand themselves as a spiritual being, as an eternal soul, part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. And they will be engaged in the eternal service of the Lord. So the Nitya Bhadas, they're, they're simply thinking of the body and sense gratification, satisfying the senses. Nitya Bhadas, can be transformed. They can be made into Nitya Siddhas. They, the covering does not have to be eternal. This is the point. That while the living entity becomes covered by Maya, that covering is not eternal. Just like Bhagavad Gita, there are five topics in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Do you know them? What are the five topics? Amrita? Huh? Yes, right. And which one is not eternal? Right. Karma is not eternal. Karma can be destroyed, can be changed. 
And how has it changed? By devotional service. Yes, Vendra Gopam, Tavendra Ahoswakarma, Bandha Nurupa Palabhajanam Apanoti, Karma Nirdahati Kintu Chabakti Pajam, Govinda Madhipursam, Tamaham Pajamin. Lord Brahma tells us, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who burns up to the root all fruitive activities of those who are imbued with devotion and impartially ordains for each the due enjoyment of the fruits of their activities. No less in the case of Lord Brahma than in the case of the Indra Gopa, the tiniest germ. Lord Brahma way up in the top of the universe and the Indra Gopa, a tiny insignificant living entity. The, but they're all under the control of their karma. Lord Brahma is enjoying or suffering his karma and the Indra Gopa is also enjoying or suffering his karma. But that karma can all be removed, just like the fire can burn up all the weeds and root everything. So the same way all of one's karmic reactions can be burned up. It's that devotional service is like a blazing fire which can burn up to the roots all fruit of activities all the karma. Of course, you have to do devotional service like a blazing fire. You cannot just be uh, haphazard and casual about it. We must be very fixed in our devotional service. Then you get the real result of devotional service. Vaya vasayatmika bhuti ekeha kurananda those who are on this path are resolute in determination and their aim is one, O Arjuna. The intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. So, different kinds of moods are there. You see, if we're very resolute and determined, in, our, in other words, vaya vasayatmika buddhi, that kind of devotion, very fixed and focused on what we're trying to do, then that devotional service is like a blazing fire and it burns up all the karmic reactions from the past. But if we take it very casual, and oh, a little bhakti here and a little deva, Seva here, and we'll go to Tikali and we'll worship Durga, good Durga Puja's coming, and uh, you know, and a bit here and a bit there, this God and that God. We're not very focused. Well, Krishna, yeah, yeah, I love Krishna, but you know, I also like Ganesh, you know, and Lord Shiva's cool, you know. We have these different moods, so that's Bahushaka, Yanantasya. Not focused. So, many brands, you don't get the, the, the same effect. So the point is, devotional service has to be pure. It has to be Shuddha Bhakta. It has to be, as Rupa Goswami describes, pure devotion. Anya Abhilasita Sunyam. Very good, yes. You're a Bhakti Shastri graduate, must be, right? Yes, very good. You know the verses. So, Rupa Goswami describes pure devotion must be without fruitive desires or philosophical speculation. It must be performed simply for the pleasure of Krishna. And it must be continuous also. Ahaitaki 
devotional services described in Srimad Bhagavatam, just like Rupa Goswami described it. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami is saying, the supreme occupation for all humanity to attain is loving service to the Supreme Lord. Such service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. So that mood has to be there, that unmotivated material life, we're very motivated. What motivates us? Well, money, you know, we want money, we get very motivated to make money. And there's many other things that motivate us, you know. Sometimes Kirtan Mela motivates a lot of people. Kirtan Mela, a lot of people like to go to Mayapur, Kirtan Mela. Sometimes Parikrama can motivate some people. Going to Holy Dham sometimes motivates people. Festivals help to motivate people. Ratiyatra, we just said Ratiyatra. There was a lot of energy, there was a lot of enthusiasm. People we never saw before, hardly ever see. Somehow they all appear and they're there and they're enthusiastic, chanting and dancing. So very nice, different things generate in that kind of enthusiasm, which is necessary for devotional service. So, we want to understand that the living entity is one and at the same time different from the Lord. We have to connect to the Supreme Lord. When we connect to the Lord, then we become secure. The, the process is there for bhakti yoga. Yoga connect, connects us to the Supreme Lord. Right? Yoga, like the word yoke, yoke the horses to the cart. So yoga is linking the, the soul, the living entity, the tiny living entity to the Supreme Lord. And we do this through the process of bhakti yoga, which is based on hearing and chanting, or shravanam and kirtan the roots of the creeper of devotion. If we get firmly connected to the Lord, then the material energy will not trouble us. We will be unaffected by the material energy. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives the example of the lotus flower. Just like the lotus sits on the water, but it's never covered by the water. The lotus leaf is waterproof. It can sit on the water and it doesn't get all uh, damp and ruined because it has a special covering on it which uh, waterproofs the leaf. So the same way the living entity, if we are connected closely to the Lord, through his devotional service, we will not be affected by the material energy. That one who is engaged in my devotional service without falling down, then they come to the level of Brahman. And the, they transcend the modes of the material nature. So, the li as living entities, we have to understand how dependent we are on the Lord. Just like the hand is de dependent on the body. When the hand is disconnected from the body, it's useless. You cut off the hand, it's no use, it's horrible. One, one devotee I know, he, he's a doctor, and he told me one day they had to amputate someone's leg. And he, he, said, he said, when they amputated the leg, it was just horrible. They, and the, the immediate reaction was, oh, get this out of here, you know, just a horrible leg, you know. 
But when the leg is connected to the body, it's very valuable, very important. So in the same way, the living entity, when we are connected to the Lord, then we can manifest the good qualities of the living entity. But when we are disconnected from the Lord, then we fall under the influence of the material energy and we exhibit all the bad qualities of the conditioned soul. We become under the spell of lust and anger and greed and illusion and madness and envy. These different things are all exhibited because we're not connected to Krishna anymore. But when we are connected to Krishna, then naturally we will develop all the good qualities. Yashyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinjana sarvair gunais tatra samase suraha harava bhaktasya kato mahadgana mano retain asati bhavato bhati. One who is a devotee will have all the good qualities of the Lord because is engaged in the service of the Lord, all the demigods will bestow their blessings on him. But one who is not a devotee has no good qualities, even though he may be very expert in maintaining his family members, or he may be very expert in the mystic yoga process. But if he is not a devotee, then it's understood he's under the material nature. Sometimes he will be good, sometimes he will be bad. He's under the spell of the material energy. And it means sometimes good, sometimes passion, sometimes ignorance. There's always a competition between the modes of nature. One has to learn how to overcome the material nature and of course we overcome the material nature by taking shelter of the controller of the material nature. None other than the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. So in this way we understand the oneness and the difference between the Lord and the living entities. Are there any questions? Any comment? Yes, Guru Chandra Prabhu. Sometimes, uh, in my life experience, sometimes a person, uh, like how Arjuna says, uh, like how Arjuna asks Krishna, why sometimes, you know, in spite of me knowing everything, we still get attracted to do the wrong thing. So, in that also sometimes our mind is always very uh, uh, dangerous and we always have to keep on hearing, hearing and chanting so that at least our mind uh, comes under control. And I was just reflecting also, recently one doctor, he had a wife and a daughter, an Indian, Indian family. They are very rich, they had a business, a business fail. The guy becomes so crazy, he shot his wife and daughter and shot himself. So you see all these things are, if they don't have any spiritual, spiritual understanding, spiritual inclination, then they are always on the material platform and they will do all the wrong things. So such a pity, we don't know whether the wife and the daughter wanted to die. But he took it on himself that without him, the wife and daughter also should die. He wanted to kill himself. But that's all the temporary nature of the material world. If, if, if he had not done it, somehow another Krishna would have given them some different way, maybe not so rich. Maybe Maharaj can comment on this. Yes, your point is t proper that the uh, Living entity performs sinful activities. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna asks, Arjuna asks the question, why is one impelled 
to do sinful things, even unwilling, as if engaged by force. And Lord Krishna responds, explaining lust, that it is lust only, O Arjuna, born of contact with the modes of nature, later transformed into wrath, which is the all-devouring sinful enemy. People, so how to conquer that lust? Well, Lord Krishna gives some indications in Bhagavad Gita and talks about regulating the senses. Regulating the senses, that's an important item that we, we do want to practice controlling the, the senses to control the mind. If we have a regulated lifestyle, then it becomes a little easier if you have a regulated program. And then also cultivating spiritual knowledge is important. Um, the person you described, the, you know, some doctor killing his wife and daughter. And so, obviously the person didn't have any real spiritual knowledge. And, but sometimes people do have that knowledge, but they act impulsively. And they do these kind of things without thinking of just impulsively sometimes. They just, in, on the, you know, without thinking, they act in this manner. Well, last night we were talking about, the discussion came up about suicide because we were talking about sati, how sati gave up her body. And so someone asked about suicide. And so I said, well, it, it, often people do these things uh, without a lot of thought. But if they think about it more, then they'll, they'll be hesitant to do it. But when they impulsively act, then they do these kind of things. So, this impulsive activities, this is a problem. Therefore, regulating the senses, it prevents us from acting impulsively. If we are regulated in our activities, regulated in our eating and sleeping, and these activities, then certainly it helps us to control the mind and senses. And, of course, again, also we need to hear, we need to cultivate spiritual knowledge. Because that knowledge will destroy the ignorance which is so strong in us. Yeah, we are conditioned souls. So people, people often go through difficulties, as you described, and then the doctor, what happened, lost his business or something? Yeah, he, he had business, he's an Indian, Indian person, and uh, he had a five million US dollar house. And then he did business, and the business failed, and he went for bankruptcy about a uh, few years ago, 2022. Yeah, I think it, it keeps on in his mind, mind. The daughter is 18 years old going to college. See, then you, you kill yourself, it's one thing. You can kill your family members. And you think it's a very nice thing. Mm. Very tragic. People do these things. So everyone needs association. We need, you know, someone in that kind of situation. He needed to have some kind of association, some guidance, people who go through these economic disasters, they have to understand that this is some kind of karmic reaction which is coming on them. Hmm. It's not eternal. Hmm. You lose a lot of money. You can be very rich one moment, you can have nothing the next moment. So, of course, it's difficult, it becomes pain, difficult for people to adjust, to lower their standards of living. Very difficult, especially as you describe, someone had a five million dollar house. That's big. <laughs> And then suddenly your business, you lost everything, bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And when the banks come, 
They take everything. You have nothing left. I, <laughs> there was one family in Hong Kong. The bank came one day to the home. The woman was at home. Her husband was in the office. The woman was at home. The bank just came to the home. Just th took her out of the house and took the whole house. And she was left in the street with nowhere to go. And the husband ran off. <laughs> left his wife and the husband ran off and the wife was left in the street with no home and so these kind of things happen but what to do difficult you have to go on with life you have to accept the, the, the good and the bad these things come life in the course of life, we have, we have to accept these difficulties, just like winter and summer season. So sometimes these kind of things happen to us. We have to we have to tolerate. We have to go on. Uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, you have the example of the Brahmana from Avanti Desh. Uh, the Brahmana from Avanti Desh. He was a rich man, and he then, but he was very miserly. He never gave any money to his family, never gave, pay, he didn't like to pay his servants, didn't like to give money to his wife or anything. And, and then it happened that he lost all of his money. And when he lost all of his money, then everybody left him. All the family and everyone left him. And he was left alone with nothing. So what did he do? He renounced the world. He became a sannyasi. He became a mendicant. And, and he would go to people. And of course they knew who he was. And they would spit at him. And they would do terrible things to him. Because they thought, this man, we know him. And, we, and look, now he's coming begging. So they had no good regard for him. But he became very transcendental to everything. Huh? And he, he the, there's a, a famous verse which is recited by the, the prayer of the Brahmana from Avanti Desh that uh, he understood that everything happens by the grace of the Lord and one should just simply remain fixed on the super soul and go on in life. So this should be the mood. You have to transcend the material nature, not be disturbed. That good and bad were going to be there. You don't know the future. But whatever is going to happen, we have to understand it's the plan of the Supreme Lord. And we are simply instruments in the hands of the material nature. So go on with life, just, just tolerate. <laughs> it sometimes, of course, very difficult to tolerate these things, but what else can we do? We have to, we have to, we have to train ourselves in tolerance. And how to develop that tolerance? Take shelter of the holy name by chanting the holy name and by reading the, the, the scriptures, reading the Bhagavad Gita and remembering and thinking on the teachings which Lord Krishna gives in the Bhagavad Gita, that will help us to overcome all the obstacles. Yes. Maybe it's because of greed that you know the three gateways of hell, lust, anger, and greed. So in this case, it's he, he always want to be richer and richer and richer and in the end, he never see the pitfalls, never see the risk, and then he lost everything. Mm, yes, yeah, often like that, people want more and more, they never have enough, they like to get more and more, the material desires never end, and then when they lose everything, then they think there's no more purpose in life and they just finish the life. So the mind becomes absorbed in the material and contemplating the material. 
They have no thought of the spiritual. Um, when we pray to the deities on the altar, how, how do we pray to, to remove this energy? To, 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 do we pray to Subhadrabali? To say, you know, perhaps can we please uh, reduce the Maya energy that is covering us? Or do we pray to Shumati Wanarari to engage him in us in the service? Or shall we talk to Vikyananda? Can you please accept me uh, in the service? How, how do we pray to reduce the energy of Maya? Yes, we, pr we should pray and we can pray to the deities. As you mentioned, you can pray like that. We pray to the Lord, please engage me in your service. If we are engaged in the service of the Lord, then you cannot serve Maya. If you are fully engaged in Krishna's service, there is no room for Maya. Just like when you are in the light, there is no darkness. So stay in the light. Hmm? Go to the light. Don't stay in the dark. So that is Krishna consciousness. We pray to the Lord, please engage me in, our, in your service. The chanting of Hare Krishna is a prayer. When we chant the Maha Mantra, it's a prayer to Krishna. We're praying to Krishna, O Supreme Lord Krishna, O Supreme Lord Rama, please engage me in your service. So, the chanting of Hare Krishna is a prayer and it's also the answer to our prayer. Because when we are praying, when we are chanting like that, then we are engaged in service. The prayer itself is service to Krishna. That is one of the types of devotional service. So, praying and chanting, this is the answer to our prayers. So we, we just have to keep chanting, keep praying. <laughs> hmm. we, we, we can pray to the Lord that, uh, as, like Lord Krishna prayed, in the Shikshastikam, Lord Chaitanya teaches us that nadanam najanam nasandarim, I have no desire for wealth or followers, or to enjoy material opulences. I simply want devotional service, birth after birth. So that is the nice mode, the, the devotee doesn't even ask for liberation, but he just said, birth after birth, please engage me in your service. And, and we can pray to the Lord, please whatever happens, I may lose everything, I may have nothing, but may I always remember you. And just pray that I can always remember you at every moment. And when we leave this world also, we want to be able to remember the Lord. Right? So that's important. That, that memory of the Lord, to fix the mind on Him. So you can also pray to the Lord. I just pray that whatever happens, you may pick, you may handle me roughly, you may make me broken hearted, but I just pray that somehow I can always remember you. Okay? Alright? Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Prabhu, I don't know. What do you do with the this press?